Over the years, the skies have played host to some truly impressive flyers. From pterosaurs in the Cretaceous, giant dragonfly relatives in the Carboniferous, and, of course, the many species of birds that occupy this space in the modern day. Some of which can get to insane sizes, such as the current record holder for the biggest flying bird, the Wandering Albatross, which has a wingspan of 11 feet, roughly the height of a standard basketball hoop. Even this size pales in comparison to the birds from long ago. Just 2.5 million years ago, the skies would have been home to a bird with a wingspan double that of the albatross. This behemoth went by the name of Pelagornis sandersi. This species belonged to the much larger family of birds known as the Pelagornophids, who thrive for an extremely long period of time first appearing in the early Paleocene and lasting until the early Pleistocene. These birds are believed to have been coastal animals, an inference based on the fact that their fossils are found in marine deposits. This means these birds probably lived a similar lifestyle to the albatross. I mean, looking at the two side by side, that isn't a stupid thing to think. They look pretty similar after all. So similar that initially, the family was placed as a relative of the Procelleriformes, the order of birds that contains all species of albatross as well as other birds such as shearwaters and petrels. However, this similarity was later found to be a result of convergent evolution, with later studies supporting a relationship between the Pelagornophids and the larger order of Galloanseres, which includes ducks, geese, and other fowl. But even this isn't fully supported. To give researchers some credit, trying to figure out what these birds are related to is challenging, when they possess some truly unique features, most notably teeth. Well, technically, these aren't teeth. Instead, they are bony protrusions that jut out from the jaw. This feature is thought to have evolved to help the birds catch marine animals. And it must have been pretty successful, as the family lasted for well over 50 million years. And towards the end of their reign, they grew to some truly enormous sizes, which circles us back to Pelagornis sandersi. Found in 1983 in South Carolina, the bones were unearthed near Charleston Airport, a fitting place considering their aeroplane size proportions. However, despite belonging to the biggest bird ever to fly, the bones were put into storage without actually being described. It wasn't until 2014 that these bones were pulled out of storage and described, and it was here that the bones were finally seen for what they represented a bird with an average wingspan of 20 feet, or roughly the height of a giraffe. This surely begs the question of how something this big was able to fly. Well, when it comes to birds, there are two ways in which they fly. Either they flap their wings consistently in the air in a process known as powered flight, or they catch air and wind currents with their wings by gliding. Based on the size of Pelagornis sandersi, researchers have suggested that it employed the latter. This is because as a bird's body size increases, the amount of power required from the muscles to lift them off the ground also increases. But to keep a bird of this size airborne, it would require more power than the bird's muscles could produce. Additionally, several features in the bird's skeleton hint that flapping would have been challenging. For instance, the bird's shoulder blades were relatively small, indicating that the muscles attached to this area would have been as well, and thus could not produce much power. The bird's humerus also has an almost square shape to its head, which limits the joint's range of motion. This shape, however, has been said to help the bird stabilize its wings when gliding. This isn't to say that the bird couldn't flap its wings at all, as it would have had to get off the ground somehow. However, whether this was done through flapping is debated. Research on birds in a similar niche to Pelagornis sandersi, such as albatrosses, often employ rapid bursts of flapping during takeoff. But due to the limitations mentioned earlier, it's doubtful that Pelagornis sandersi could actually do this. Instead, other theories suggest that to take off, the bird would simply extend its massive wings and run into the wind to achieve flight. 
Once airborne, it's likely that this bird would fly over the ocean using harsh wind currents to keep it airborne whilst it looked for prey to catch with its toothy beak. This prey probably consisted of soft-bodied animals such as squids and eels, as despite looking rather deadly, the bird's pseudo-teeth are actually hollow and fairly fragile. However, this might not have been the bird's set menu, as it has been said the bird may have also acted as a scavenger, using its immense size to bully or harass other birds into giving up their food in a manner similar to modern-day skewers. Also, quick side note, in researching this video, I found out that a skewer's form of bullying is very weird. Basically, they'll just bully another bird to the point where that bird becomes so stressed it vomits up any food it may have eaten, at which point the skewer will just fly in and eat the vomit. Apologies for the side tangent, I just found it funny to imagine a bird the size of Pelagornis doing the same. Sadly, we will never know for certain if this bird performed this behaviour, as the bird, along with the entire group of Pelagornifidae, went extinct. The reason for their demise isn't clear, but there is a theory, that being that they were simply too big. Early in their evolution, this group had several species that were smaller in size, but by the end of their time on Earth, only the larger sized Pelagornis species were left. The theory is that the large body size and all the adaptations the animal acquired to attain it made it specialised and dependent on specific environmental conditions, and once these changed, it was bye bye big bird. Still, it's pretty amazing to think that an animal this size once existed. But this isn't the first time giant creatures have simply vanished, and if you want to learn about them, click the video on the screen. Until next time, bye bye.